Hello and welcome to Fly Time with me, Alex Jardine, and in today's video we're going to be looking at early season trout dry flies. Seems a little bit of an odd subject to start with, with snow falling outside, but one that's not too far around the corner, so a very exciting thing to look forward to uh, casting hopefully at some rising trout in a, in a couple of months time. Um, so during the video we're going to look at five different flies which have done me really well um, for those early season visits to the river. Times when fishing can be tricky and you only come across a few rising fish in the day maybe and when they're really selective, they're only rising during decent hatches so they become really selective on the flies that they're taking. So whereas other times when they're picking up different insects and switching from fly to fly and they might take just a more generic pattern sometimes in the spring you can find that you really need to hone your patterns in so starting with what better spring fly than the March Brown a fly that typically as the name suggests hatches in March um, often hatching all the way through into early April uh, it's a fly that often has me driving to, to Wales to focus on targeting big rising fish. We don't get too many locally to me. If I do, I have to travel more into Devon and they're typically found in, in the more boulder strewn rivers and streams. It's a nice big fly, so it's a great early season pattern, which is one of the reasons why it manages to pull fish up, even when the weather might be still quite cold. Um, Hookwise, I've got the um, Partridge SLD2 in a size 12 uh, thread. Uh, we've got our Semperfly Classic Wax Thread 12O, um, obviously in brown. And we just start our tying nice and simple. The reason why I go with the slightly heavier wire hook here is I, I like it for offering the the strength uh, when tying in extra hackles. Uh, what it also, um, because the fly is a bit bulkier in, in the style of hackle that we're going to be using later, um, you can get away with the heavier wire hook, it's not going to drown the fly. Quite often you'll be fishing this on the flat areas of, of the pool uh, in a river, but you want it so you can switch to the more riffles, but typically early season the fish are going to be in the slower water. They're not, they don't need to be in that high oxygenated neck of the pool. Uh, so make sure if you're fishing at that time that you um, that you focus more in the pool than at the neck of the pool. So we're just going to take this back to the back of the shank there, and then we're going to take our trusty. Cot de Leon feather and select four or five fibers. It's great tailing material. Uh, again, you'll have seen it in quite a number of, of the videos that I've done. Uh, it's a lovely stiff fiber, so it, it works really well in dry flies because it helps just hold up the back end of the fly on the water. So length, you want about the shank length as the tail, thumb and forefinger against the shank, take the thread into it and pinch, slide it down then and then you're putting the pressure on top of the hook so the material's not wrapping around the shank. There we go. I don't mind them bunching together, if you want to split them out you can put a turn behind them but I'm quite happy with it as it is there. And then just tidy up our additional bits of fibres there. Just ease it forward with the thumbnail. It makes it a bit easier to, to trim them out. And tidy that down. At this point I like to tie in the last tackle first. So here we've got a woodcock wing. Uh, I like it for the mixture of light and dark browns, works particularly well for, for March browns, um, but also 
um, various granum patterns if you want to mix we'll be looking at a granum pattern a little bit later on it's a short fibre, it's a short feather so we're only looking to tie with a small section of the middle and you almost want it oversized so it's going to just go past the length of the body so that's a good heckle there and to prepare it we just pull away the bottom fibres that we don't want get those out of the way and then take the portion of the feather that we want in our fly and just stroke it back I've lost a couple of fibres there but I'm not too worried just get a nice split there and turn it so the tip is facing backwards and we can take the thread right the way to the front and then just track that over and wind back helps build a bit of bulk around the thorax area as well and we can just trim out the unneeded bits there flatten that down and take our thread all the way to the back it's really up to up to you and your personal preference on, on time whether you put in a, uh, a rib um, I don't feel a need um, in my version if I buy time with pheasant tail uh, then I would look at putting a rib on but I'm going to do a dub body so I don't always feel the need to uh, to build a ribbon uh, dubbing wise I've got the Semperfly super fine dubbing and perfectly matched with the March Brown colour which is a nice sort of chocolatey brown it's a long fibre this and it's fine to keep it long uh, for this particular fly secure a small fraction of it at the front there slide it up and get a nice lock over bind it nice and tight and begin working that forward so you're looking to you'll see I'll be putting a few turns back on themselves you're looking to build a slight taper going forward and leaving a good amount a sort of good fifth of the shank there to then secure in my main hackle so for this one I'm just going with a standard red game dry fly cape and unfortunately I've used this quite, quite a lot so I'm running low on feather sizes that I like but we can match that up that's a little bit short that one maybe this one here so we're just bending that around and we're looking for almost the length of the shank I think it's going to be this one here so that's better that so you'll see that's more or less the length of the body that we've just done. Again, preparing the feather, remove away these horrible fibres down the bottom, those sort of webbed ones, they don't do anyone any good. So take those out of the way. We're also leaving the stiffest part of the fibre uh, that we don't need. That makes our, makes our hackling difficult. Quite often you'll find when you're taking it round, it, the hacker will rotate. So if you ever struggle with the hackle rotating as you go, it's often because you're tying it too far down towards uh, towards the base of the fibre. Take it up a little bit further and you'll find it gets a bit softer and easier to work with. This time, with this one, some people will tie it so the, wind's go, uh, so the hackle's facing forward. Um, for this particular pattern, I'm quite happy to have it facing back. Clamp it down. Put a reasonable bit of pressure. What I then like to do is fold the stem back and then 
tight back on itself, that really binds it in. That's not going anywhere now. Uh, trim out the unneeded bit. Um, just take a little bit of your dubbing, not a huge amount. Simply what you're doing here is putting a bed for your hackle to sit on. So you're not looking for bulk, you're just looking for a nice covering. Take our trusty hackle pliers and secure the feather there. Right now, ease it forward. It just softens up that base there. Stroke the fibers back and lay your first turns round. So you don't trap any fibers, you can stroke it back. Lay another one. And another one, and then on this one, we're just going to bring it up, take our thread through, and again, and now take everything back, and put a few locking turns there. Now we're going to trim that hackle out, make sure you don't cut your woodcock hackle out. Uh, we're now going to select that one, moisten the fingers a little bit and stroke the fibres back and then keep going as you go, that will just split them out from what we call the webbing which is the bit that's holding them all together. Do so again, just keep doing that and then you get the wonderful mottled effect going through the wing. And what I like to do is go round once, all the way until you've got it facing up there. Take the thread through the hackle again. There. Stroke everything back before you cut it off. And put a couple of key locking turns just in front. If you're worried about your thread falling off at this point, what you can do is lengthen it off and just throw in a quick a quick finish there and that will stop anything from sliding off the front while you cut that out trim that out and then just do a little bit of thread work at the front just to tidy up that head area Uh, once you're happy with how it's looking, let it off and you're going to finish it properly this time with your whip finish tool. Because you've got that draping hackle in, you very seldom catch any of your hackle forward. If you do, you can just brush it back before your turn. And there you have it. Just a nice simple March brown pattern, incredibly buoyant, so great even in rainy weather, but really for focusing in on those large trout that are quite often found rising in mid to late March or early April, when they really focus on these hatches. And the hatch might only be for about an hour or so, but make sure you've got a couple on these, a couple of these in your box so you can change quickly, and I guarantee you should get some interest. So now moving on to the second fly of the video, we're going to tie the Quill LDO. So it's a fly that I did feature in um, in the latest uh, in one of the latest videos on tying quill bodies, but it's such a great early season dry fly that I couldn't leave it out of this video. So here we go, we've got a Partridge SLD, um, just the standard one, so the lighter wire hook and in a size 12. Uh, thread wise we're going to change from the brown thread to a pale olive uh, again center fly waxed uh, in 12 o and we're just going to start a little bit back from the eye and take our thread all the way to the back of the hook there 
trim that out. So I tend to only tie this pattern in um, with the darker body in two sizes, which is a 12 and a 14. Um, but I then do a lighter bodied one for a bit later in the season, uh, which I'll do from usually from a 14 all the way down to an 18. You can do 20, but I tend to change the body then. Uh, tail wise, we're back on our Cop de Leon fibres. And we're just going to trim out again. So the five. That doesn't look. Get them again about the body length. Thread up through thumb and forefinger and just slide it down on top of the hook. And then wind that all forward. What I tend to find with the large dark olives, I don't like to build up too much body bulk. Uh, I like to have it fairly uniform. Uh, the fish seem to enjoy it that way. So, if the fish like it, why why change it? So, wrap that back down. Then we're going to take the quill that we're going to use. So, this is the Semperfly Inferno uh, Goose by it. Uh, this is dark olive. Uh, you can do it with a brown as well. The brown works quite well for the large dark olives. But, uh, so, I've taken one by it there. And if I was tying a smaller size, I would split it, but on this bigger one, quite often we'll keep it as it is. You just trap the tip of it in with the curve of the quill going up. So trap that down and then take our thread to the front, roughly where we're going to start the wing. I like to do this with my fingers rather than a hackle plier. So take it over and then push it round with your forefinger. So you're taking the strain off the fibre as you wrap. And you'll see as this goes you're getting a lovely segmentation. And the lovely thing with these goose bites, you get it with turkey bites as well, is you get this raised raised section. It's a bit fiddly when you tie them off. But make sure you get plenty of thread down on that so it's not going anywhere. And some in front. And then you can trim that out there. Don't worry about it standing up at the moment because we're going to get our trusty CDC. Where we're going to take three feathers, generally try and get three relatively identical feathers with a good amount of fibres in them and pair up the tips so they're all together, all draping in the same direction and then brush the fibres together so they really are able to get the bulk of the material together. So again you're looking for about the length of the body in front of the eye. So we'll match that up facing forward and really bind that down so nice and happy with that and then just trim that, leave a little bit of a bump. I like to leave the bump because that helps to build up the thorax area. And then just take a very simple natural hair's ear blend uh, to work on your thorax area. Bind that to the thread and begin to build that up. Not got enough, then add a little bit more. You're just looking to build up that sort of wing bud area, add a bit of a leggy. That's why we use a natural dubbing like hairs there. You want it to be leggy and offer a bit of profile on the surface. Then pull your wing back 
and build up some thread on the front. What that will do is then push the wing up so it looks almost like the natural thing as it's coming down. I mean, we can pick it out as the as the fisher and fortunately the fish seem to take it as the real thing. So it's a perfect little little pattern. Really simple to tie and really effective in the early season. So then we look to finish it in front of that CDC wing. That once, twice just for security there. And then in with our scissors, just open them out, don't cut, just push. And that will finish your little quill bodied LDO. Perfect. I find this pattern works really well in early April in the UK. Um, that's when the fish seem to really lock onto them. Sometimes if we have a hot spring it will happen more in March. Uh, and unfortunately we then miss it on our rivers down in the south. But if you travel a bit further afield, um, further north in the, in the UK um, or further west, uh, the rivers are open and the large dark olives are hatching. So then moving on to a, another favourite early season fly for me is the granum. It's the first first sedge that hatches of the year. Usually for us around April time, I know further north it pushes more into late April into May. Um, hook wise we've got the Partridge SLD2 again in a size 12 so what you'll see with your early season flies is they tend to be quite big. So size 12 thread we've got the Classic Wax by Semperfly in a 12-0 uh, in brown and again just starting back from the eye we'll work our thread back here. So one thing with caddis, what can be a good option to do uh, is to add a little hot spot at the back, just a pale green. So I tend to do half with it and half without. Uh, so I'm just taking some kapok in light olive. Uh, so this one, a nice sort of yellowy greeny colour, just a very small amount. And we're just looking to build up a little spot just at the back there. Could probably add a fraction more because the K pot does dub down really quite tightly. That's a great dry fly dubbing, super buoyant. So we've got a little hot spot at the back there, and then we're going to take. Um, this, this is from Nature Spirit, it's African goat dubbing, uh, a bit like seal's fur, it's got a really buggy, spiky look to it, so it gives you a lot of bulk and buoyancy around that body area of the fly. So I take a nice handful, it's difficult to dub, so don't be put off using it, just work with small amounts at a time you'll lose a lot so it's worth getting something like a fly tidy or a tray to tie on which catches the loose bits and then you can pick them up and reapply them. So bind it nicely tight, it's never going to be completely wound tight but that's the benefit of using the material. So you see that's giving us a nice amount of bulk and a lot of spiky hair everywhere. So takes floatant really well. This fly is not going to sink. And we'll add a little bit more now. So you'll find working with this style of dubbing it's better to do a small amount and then reapply more as you go. So we're just going to add a small amount more but we need to make sure that we've got plenty of room at the front of the fly to work with after. So, there we go. So, good amount of room left at the front. See how those fibers are really sticking out. 
And now we're going to go back to our trusty CDC feathers. And you're going to take a if you've got some really nice good quality of CDC, you should only need a couple of feathers for this. Pair them up so the tips match, draping in the same direction, and brush them together. And we're going to tie these in facing back, and it should be overshooting a little hot spot by about the same again. So it should overshoot the whole hook, clamp it down, pinch between thumb and forefinger, and just slide the thread down onto the hook. That will help keep it all in position. Make sure it's bound down nicely. Straight those fibers back. Wind a bit in front and behind. Perfect there. And then we're going to take some nice natural deer hair. Um, it's just a sort of all-purpose deer hair. Um, you can look at some of the um, the Epps Caddis deer hair and things like that from Nature Spirit, which is perfect. You want a relatively dark one that's got this lovely mottled lighter effect. Uh, on the tips, looks just like the um, the granum wing then. Again another material that's great for granum is woodcock because it looks identical to the granum wing. So I've taken a nice small bank share and we're just going to take our trusty deer hair stacker because we want to get those all lined up and then turn it on its side, pull it out and you'll see that those fibres are also I've caught a bit of debris, they're all matched up. Remove it. Always remove it the direction that you want to tie in so you're not passing it around too much. And then overshoot it to the CDC a little because it will shorten as you tie it in. And then get your thread and lay a loose turn. And another one going towards the eye and you can start putting more pressure on. You see how the fibres over the eye are now sp spreading out? We don't want that to happen so much at the back which is why that looser turns there. Get a nice spread. Loose turns at the back, tighter ones at the front. And the great thing with deer hair is it offers a bit more buoyancy to the fly. Whilst the CDC offers the buoyancy but it softens it up. So if you get a really aggressive take you tend to hook up quite nicely on them. I'm going to take some of our CDC that we tied in and just pinch some of the fibres off. And we're going to bind that as a dubbing and take it round so it gives you a really nice bulky caddis head and this is why I don't cut any of that out just yet you can take your thread in front whip finish tool you can hold all of that out of the way Let that in, and one more time. It is secure, that's toothy trout. I'm going to get the better of that one. Lift our thread out, and then with this additional material, we can actually cut it a little bit on. And you get a nice furry caddis head on it. You can still get to the eye with these down eye hooks. You got really nice granum wing and buggy underbody a great dry fly again as i say for april time usually and when the granum are here it's usually a two-week window when they go crazy and the trout love them too moving on to another fly now um, the stew's olive and 
slightly different shape of hook. This is an emerger now. So this is a bit more of an all-encompassing dry fly. Either when you're not too sure what's uh, what's emerging or um, or you're not picking the fish up on things like the LDO and um, quill bodied uh, done. You can go to a pattern like this. It might be that the fish are taking the emergence. So here we've got the Sprite hook, uh, the S2100 in a size 14. Uh, they call it a buzzer hook, but it's great for the style of fly. Um, you can tie these all the way down to an 18. Uh, you can tie them down to 20s and and some, and you can tie them on straight hooks as well. One of the things I like about this is how the shank straightens out towards the um, towards the eye of the hook. Uh, Thread-wise, we've got the Semperfly Wax Silk in Pale Olive 12 o and we're going to start again just back from the eye of the hook. Uh, take that. Out. Now we need to focus a little bit more on our thread work because we're not actually going to put any dubbing on this body it's all going to be thread based so we take this round almost to the extent of the bend and then bring it back up on itself and that's forming our body as we go and generally once down and once back up is more than enough to create the body on these flies and then we we'll simply go back to our trusty CDC where we're going to pair up pair up a couple of feathers uh, we're going to go for, with three I can find a third one that I like. So, a small one. All the tips matched up together, all facing the same direction. Uh, the curve of the feathers all going the same way. Wing length, again, roughly the body length. And pinch that to the hook, thread up through, and slide it down on top of the hook there. So wind to the eye and then really bind that down. So that's looking good. And then what like we did with the LDO done, just cut that off and don't worry about that little bump in there. We're actually going to leave it at this point. We're going to get our Trusty hairs here, can't go wrong with natural hairs here to dub the thorax area. That will give you your leggy, bulky wing bug, or wing bud area. Uh, bind that down, make sure you don't dub it too tightly so those fibres can break up and spread out. So you want to make sure you've got all the turns behind the wing, stroke the wing back and hopefully you've left yourself enough room to build up a little head area which will push the wing up looking just like the emerger body underneath the surface of the film hanging in like the natural wing bud floating and then the wing just exploding out from the fly looking like a freshly emerged olive some description go on with the whip finish in front of the wing and a super effective early season emerger pattern but make sure you've got it in your box all the way through the year because this is a great pattern um, all throughout the year when you're looking for a bit more of a generic emerger pattern. So now going to the final fly of the video we're going to look at a generic fly. We've done a, ger a generic emerger, now we're going more for a generic um, done pattern. Um, so think of it more as a parachute Adams. Uh, it's not a parachute Adams just because um, it's not got the parachute Adams hackle. 
Um, so it's a parachute done on the SLD size 14. So a little bit smaller than our March Browns and our LDOs. But when you're not too sure what the fish are taking, it's often better to go a little bit smaller than bigger. Um, because you can always go bigger. But sometimes if you put a fly that's too big on, you can switch the fish down and they stop rising and then you've blown your chance. Whereas quite often if you float a smaller fly over, the fish will continue rising but they might not take your fly. You can then go bigger and see if that was the reason why you weren't getting the tapes. So, size 14 SLD. Thread-wise, we've got the Semperfly Nano Silk in black, 18.0. So we don't need a coloured thread as such, we're just looking for a good quality strong thread that will allow us plenty of thread turns. Starting back from the eye, a little bit different to the other flies and we lay almost a half length of thread. Knock out our tag end. We're going to, going to tie in the wing post here. So we've got various colours of poly yarn there. You can vary it up depending on how visible you want the fly to be. So you can go with these oranges, yellows. You can go with a sort of nice turquoise blue. It's going to go with a standard white today. Just for the... Oh, actually I'm going to go with a slight colour just so it picks up better. I'm going to go with that turquoise. And there's quite, there's quite a lot to this poly yarn. So I'm just going to split it in half. Do that. So, quite literally getting a sort of blue wing version in here. So, take this forward roughly to where you want the post to be, which would be around about there. Use the weight of the bobbin now to pull that material up other side and just. Oh, that would be much better than that rock it into position where you want to tie it. Lay a couple of locking turns in there and then pair this up together. Let's do a securing turn either side. And now with a parachute what we want to do is run our thread around the base of these materials going up, so we're binding them together and we're laying a strong base which we're going to run our hackle round towards the end of the fly. Right. Don't go too high otherwise it will tip over. And then once we've done that we can take our thread to the back of the fly, back of the shank of the hook and back to our trusty Cote de Leon tailing feather and we're going to take four or five fibres clear those out and again body length pinch thread up between thumb and forefinger and just slide it down on top of the hook there, bind it down and then we're going to dump the body so we don't need to take it worry about running it all the way to the front and then take our thread back to where the tail begins. Body wise we're going to use the Semperfly K-Pot dubbing as I say super buoyant so a great material for tying any dry flies. And they very helpfully have a colour called Adams, which is just the colour we want for a generic Adams style parachute. And we'll take a good handful. Great thing with this dubbing is it's really simple and easy to use. And I'm just going to mix it in. And see how tight that winds with very little very little effort and we 
can begin working that forward. I want to build up a little bit of a taper. We're going to pull that off there. Line that down. And then just go for a slightly darker, darker colour at the front. Now what we might do is just go black for this one. So we'll go with the K-pop black. Just to build that darker wing bud area up. diagonal turns in there that will cover the bottom of the fly and then we're going to take our very generic grizzle cape and look for a feather that's going to give us a nice coverage around that post that's pretty good there to come to the back of the body so we're not looking for a massive draping hackle, just enough to give us a good wing impression. Remove these lower section of fibres and then I like to match it up against the post there and bind that forward, stroke that back the opposite side of the post and bind it down, ease it out and take it out with the scissors there. Some like to tie it up the post, I'm quite happy working with it as it is. I do trap a few fibres that way but actually the fish don't mind. So now you're looking to take the post around and this is where that thread work pays off. Up the post, it gives you buoyancy. Straight the fibres up and bring your hackle underneath. And do that again. And we're going to bring this one round now. Pop it under and let it drop. And use the weight of the hackle plier to hold it there while you take the thread over the top of it there. Then hold that up, just go in with your scissors and just do a very small cut around there so you're not trimming out any of the fibres. So that's tied off. Hold everything back, don't worry about tidying anything up just yet. You're going to finish dubbing the thorax area. Yeah. It's an amount of that dubbing on. Hold everything out of the way. Make sure you don't have a bald spot underneath. A little bit more. Take that up and work this forward just to the front end of the fly to finish that thorax area and then we can go in with the whip finish tool. At this point we don't need to trim back the parachute, we want to leave it long so we can keep it A out the way of our whip finish and B we can focus a bit more of it once we get the thread out of the way. So now keep, as I say, keep that long. You can ease everything forward, brushing the hackle down into position. Angle that forward and then see how that hackle splays out. Now I'll see how we want it for a parachute. So there's lots of ways you can then trim the parachute down. Most common way is just to do a parallel cut to the hook shank. But if you want to make it a little bit more arty, I'm not sure the fish mind all that much. But 
you can space it out, flatten it off a bit, and do hold it up and cut diagonally up, and that will give you a really nice wing shape on that parachute. Uh, looks brilliant on the water. So there you have it. A simple, effective, generic parachute done. Great early season when you're not too sure what they're taking and you want to just put a generic flyer. But also use it all the way through the season later on. Um, it's just a, a version of the parachute Adams uh, essentially without the brown hackle. So thank you for joining the video on my favourite early season trout dry flies. Hopefully that's given you a little bit of inspiration, something to work towards in this colder time uh, for when we can get back on the rivers in March and April. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video and I hope you, hope you can get to the water. Thank you.